All right. So, welcome to a uh, rather nice day, a rather nice Saturday <coughs> here in Ohio. And um, we're going to take you to another of our favorite spots that we um, hit when we first started dating mm -hmm. yeah. all those many years. Many, many. It's been many. six years, honey. Oh, dear God. It just seems like an eternity. It does. <laughs> it does. But anyhow, we're going to take you around a few places and maybe even... Tell you the rumors and the legends and the, the myth and what little history we know. Um, of course, with these urban legends, sometimes history is a little jaded, um, but we will talk about what we know. There is a real interesting history to this area, especially where we're going to start right now. So, like we were saying, um, where we're going to start all out at is and I still have to admit I married him <laughs> <laughs> what was this area called? There, Spruce Vale Spruce Vale so let's give you a view across the road there I don't know how well you can see it I'll see if I can maybe zoom in a little bit before a car comes zipping by but there was an old mill over there. Just picture this with houses and cabins. Yep, there's the Jeep. I don't know where we'd be without that thing. Now this area over here is this what you were saying where the village and all that used to be probably here and on both sides uh, was the village of Sprucedale and out according to legend the the original bridge is gone out on on Sprucedale Road but that was Esther Hale's bridge where she haunts you know because she you know th these women that lived back in the 1800s no no offense to women but they pined over these men and the story goes is she was jilted at the altar and you know they found her in her cabin froze to death in her bridal gown and she haunts the bridge so her cabin was close to that bridge out there this though is one of our big favorite spots don't know how well you can see it with all this growth but this was the first lock you uh, ever introduced me to when I, when I moved here. Yeah, it was growing in then, but not like this. Well, it wasn't really even growing in like this. I mean, this is... It's a shame that they don't take care of stuff here. Because I was able to stand right up against the wall there yeah. of the lock. But this is Jake's lock. Do you remember the story? Jake was the caregiver. Night watchman. The night watchman of all this. Oh, we can even... Go down a little bit here where like the canal used to be and give you a better view inside there. It's all falling in. So this was Powell system, which ran from uh, Bolivar, Ohio to Glasgow, Pennsylvania, connecting this canal system to the Erie Canal. Now does he haunt this? Or Jake? Yeah, yeah wasn't so, there something about him? So he was night night watchman, and <clears throat> you know back in those days they had their lanterns, and he was walking on the log, and the story is that lightning struck him and killed him. So he haunts the log. Yeah, I mean, zoom you in here a little bit.
but has grown over as Jake and his lock is. We're going to take you to another spot here in a yeah, yeah black, got black, and, on black and white dog hair doesn't <laughs> go good. But um, we're going to take you to Shouldn't another hit. spot here and um, we'll hopefully get a better view of how magnificent these locks are out here. Again, this is just a part of the history of this area that, I'm sorry, should be more should be better taken care maintained of. and should be better you know, taken thought highly of. All right, show them my shirt. I'm going to let you camera here. <laughs> that is so cute. These are baby. So, with that, let's head out to what's one of the most famous locks in this area. Actually, yes. she there's more history to it. Yes, and they'll get the story and everything as we head out to Gretchen's. Yes, and maybe even if not today, maybe even one day, the next most famous lock we can take them to. Lusk. Lusk. Both of these locks have a lot of history to them, but let's head on over and say hello to Gretchen. All right, so we're on our way out to Gretchen's lock. Starting on the Vondergren trail. And this just gives you a little bit of information on it. But it's been quite a while since we've been out here. Oh, at least five years. And it's a nice little jaunt. So we'll give you a little bit of view here. This is beautiful. I love this creek. But I also know with you. The first snake we see. I'm done. Yeah, we're done. We're I'm going. getting on your back. Going. I just walked through a spider's web, for God's sake. One of the other urban legends. No, watch. I guess you need to be careful when you're uh, walking on a possible horse trail. You never know what you're going to run into yeah, here. Be horse shit. But one of the other legends of this area and we've at times even had a run in with was um, Mushroom Lady. Lucy. Her name is Lucy. And what's her? So um, she was in love with this, um, a young guy, I guess. And she, you know, cooked for him, made him pastries and yada yada. And he fell in love with a pretty young thing and he was going to get engaged. And she got upset and um, decided that she was going to invite him and his fiance for dinner and she served them poison mushrooms and killed them. Thought it was an urban legend but they did find two bodies in her garden when they excavated there years and years later. So there was an element of truth at least to start that urban legend into motion. Yeah. Gotta love it. Watch. I'm telling you, I am so out of shape. We're gonna pause.
pause this for a minute. I don't think you all just want to watch us walk the path. So <laughs> we'll catch up to you here when we uh, get closer. There's just some of the beautiful scenery out here. I mean, this place just has a nice calming peacefulness to it. This was probably the towpath for the canal that we're on. Probably. So the probably. canal was probably here. Next to the canal here ran next to Beaver Creek. So we're getting there, folks. Stick with us. Yep. We're getting there. We're back in the wooded area at least now. Where everything starts becoming overgrown. Which makes you wonder how long it's been since people been out here. Well, just because we hadn't been doesn't mean others haven't. I mean, like, like we were saying, there's an area where you can come out on horseback and ride around back here. people still work with the fishing and stuff. I mean, yeah. But we are getting close to the lock. Just a little bit further up the path here. That's the whole section. Well, here we are approaching Gretchen's Lock, and this is probably where. I do agree a little bit with, as I like to call them, the powers that be, when you prevent the public from coming to areas like this because of the vandalism and everything. Right over here, you see a post. Now, this post used to have a sign on it that said Gretchen's Lock, and it pointed that way. And it also said Vondergreen Trail, and it pointed in the direction over here. Which, you know, I'm sorry. How about the state of Ohio puts rangers out here like they used to have when I was a kid? There you go, problem solved. Because I can already see where that's in damage. More so than when we were there six years ago. They stood the test of time since like 1860. Well, we'll give you a, a view here of the lock. That whole mounded area that you're seeing here, that's the lock. This one is in a little bit better shape than Jake's was. Yeah, some of it is caving in as expected with no these, but, there. but seriously. Look at this. This is what 
these things look like inside. So like your wooden gates would have been here on both sides. Okay. Well, probably here where the indent is. <clears throat> and then the same thing down at the other end. But look at this. It's out on top. This is beautiful. And we're letting all these trees and stuff go up through here. It's, you know, and in a decade or so, this won't be there. So, you want to tell everyone about so, Dear Sweet Gretchen? The story is, um, Gil was the engineer that built these locks on the Sandy Beaver Canal System. And he had a daughter whose mother had passed away, and she contracted malaria. Um, why he, she would be out with him, I don't know how that worked, but she contracted malaria and she passed away. Some stories have her coming from Holland, some from England, or, or I'm sorry, Ireland, um, but she died and he entombed her in the lock until the locks were finished and then he took her body back out and then they were on their way. There's a puppy dog. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. To okay. I forgot where I was left, left off. <laughs> Alright. So. This is the outside of it. Um, as I said, you know, she was entombed in the locks and he took her back out. Took her back to wherever she was going, but the ship sank. They say she haunts here. We just missed her birthday month or death month in August. Look how, how I mean... The stones, how they were laid in here. It's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And here you can sort of see, you know, how it, you, you can tell by standing at this end more, how when the canal came in from this way, that it goes into the deep. Here into the lock. Just a very, very interesting thing when you see this. It is, and it's almost like a calm and a peace, you know, whether you believe in spirits or not. You know, there's a calm and a peace when you're here. And supposedly, again, that's one of the urban legends. Is that on her birthday? Birthday or death date, I'd have to look it up. I can't remember. There's no signal her, on you. Her spirit supposedly can be seen here. I mean, I believe. I believe in that stuff, so. Just beautiful. Just beautiful workmanship. And just like with anything like this, whether you believe or not, um, when you come here, be respectful. Be respectful and, you know, just thank, thank them for letting you have the moment here. We're going to take one more quick sweep through the lock here, and then we got, I guess, another view Dan wants to share. But just standing here at the height and the whole length of the lock. So now to catch up with him because he gets lost very easily. Come down here and find that. You can really get some projected speed on. Oh wow. So yeah, so here's the outer wall. Out here down by the creek. Our granddaughter calls this her castle. 
Well, not this one. Yep, not this one. Okay. No. Yep. It was the other one in the park. No, it was this one. It was this one. Trust me. But. I don't know. If we wouldn't sink in mud, I'd say we could try to walk the outside <laughs> of this, but. <laughs> no, no. But. electronics will get wet. And yeah. We're old. We'll break hips. Yeah, that, that looks pretty muddy right there. I'm not even going to try it. But it's, it's something to see on this side. You know what I mean? And when we were more in... Yeah. That's the nice way to put it. But when we were more in shape, we, uh, we actually did climb up on top of... How did we get up there? Oh, we went from the other side. Yeah. Right? On top of the wall. We can go up that. Do you think we can make that, or do you think that's way out of the question for us? Say a prayer. You're grunting on camera. <laughs> <laughs> sat up over there the last time yeah so i think we climbed up we, yeah we climbed up there. the far edge down there and walked that whole side that one does give you more space i think we're you think we can try it or you think no Heck no you're <laughs> like no, no but um yeah just one of those things this whole area that we just toured today is just one of those things where you got to come off the beaten path, people. You got to take that little chance and take a jaunt off the everyday path. I mean, I mean, look at this, what you can find here. So, we just want to thank you and welcome all of our new subscribers. And a big thank you to the ones that have been with us from the beginning. We're going to try to, unless we pass out first, <laughs> make our way back to the Jeep. <laughs> I think this I think this warrants ice cream. Chocolate. We'll see you all in the next video. You have a great Saturday. Enjoy your day. Get off that beaten path.